Welcome into Inside the Huddle, 23rd year here at Sports Media, my second. I'm your host, Jane Slater, joined this week by Henry Melton. And, you know, Henry has come here by way of Chicago, but a lot of you might remember him from the University of Texas and hard to believe that you once played running back. I did. It was a good time. I miss it. Talk about the transition going from running back to a defensive lineman. You know, um, when I first when I first uh, did the switch, you know, I couldn't even get in the stance, and that was um, going into my junior year. Um, and you know, at that time, I was I was thinking about switching back, but um, you know, I had a lot of a lot of people help me, and um, you know, give me a lot of confidence to 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 keep going, and you know, the rest is history. Well, and it hasn't turned out too bad for him. He was a Pro Bowl player, and we're expecting him to come back to Pro Bowl form in just a matter of time. We're going to talk a little X's and O's, but we're also going to find out about Henry off the field. Also tonight, we've got a special guest in Michael Sam. We've got all that and more coming up on Inside the Huddle. Inside the Huddle, presented by Sports Media Incorporated. Inside the Huddle is filmed live on location at the House of Blues Monday nights in downtown Dallas. This week's host, defensive tackle Henry Melton. Let's go, 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 go. Inside the Huddle. Inside the Huddle. Presented by Sports Media Incorporated, the marketing pros. Welcome back to Inside the Huddle. I'm your host, Jane Slater. Excited for our first episode this season here at the House of Blues. And we've got a new cast of characters. You met him earlier, Henry Melton. And we've also got Michael Sam join the team. Well, a lot of the people, I'm sure, are excited to see you back in the area. Did you frequent here in the offseason? Uh, yeah, you know, normally I come back and... Uh, you know, enjoy this Texas heat and get out of the, uh, the Chicago winters. But uh, yeah, I'm 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 here at heart. And Michael, you're actually from Texas yourself too. How's it feel to be back? Uh, I feel great, but you know, I didn't miss the heat or the humidity. I lost 15 pounds after the first practice, and I thought I almost passed out. All right, I did this last year with some of the guys. Both of you guys are new to the team, so first impressions are huge. What coach stands out the most for you when you walked into that locker room or out in the football field? What guy just kind of made an initial impression? It's Rod. Rod Marinelli did? Oh, of course. Do you have an impression of Rod? No, it's going to be a lot of cuss words. <laughs> It'll be a lot of foul language in it. What about you? Uh, the special teams coach. Uh, he's, he's, yeah, he's, uh, he's a character. Like He reminds me of Greg Williams, the defensive coordinator for for the Rams, and because uh, Greg Williams is insane, like there's literally something wrong with him. He should be in, uh, he should be in a, uh, yeah, he should be strapped up because <laughs> he's insane. Uh, but you know, defensive players, in my mind, you have to be a little crazy. And you're gonna play defense, you gotta be loose in the head for a little bit. But I think Coach Williams is a whole nother level. So <laughs> loosest guy in the head on your team because Mincy stands out as a little out there. Mincy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, you were obviously signed to the team last week, and being a practice squad player, do you have the opportunity to impress the coaches and make your way onto that 53-man roster? Do you see yourself on that 53-man roster by the end of the year? Absolutely. Uh, I, I'm very talented. Uh, I can help this team uh, and on uh, special teams. I can help this team in, in their pass rush. And I think by the, uh, before the end of this uh, season, I can see myself being on a 53-man roster. That's my goal. I'll put you on the spot a little bit, Henry. You've been able to assess him a little bit in practice. Where do you think his development is? Where do you think he probably needs to work on his game a bit more? Mm, yeah. How yeah. you like that? I know. Yeah, I see what you're doing. <laughs> He's good. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> SEC defensive player last year is he's good. See, yeah. I like his confidence though. You've got to give him that. The man is confident. No, he, he came in, you know, he strapped up like any other, you know, rookie or any guy, new guy came in here. He's came in to work, and that's what I've seen. What player in the league right now does he remind you of in terms of model? You know, I always ask players, who do you model your game after? Who does his game look like when you see him out there? And granted, it's still early. We've only seen a little preseason work. Is it too early? <laughs> it's it's, it's a, too early. So you're not going to be a coach our, when your playing days are over. <laughs> no, I mean, I've only seen him one practice. We've only had one added practice since yeah. he's been in there. So. Who do you model your game after, Michael? Myself. But you know what? I mean, uh, I would like to. I, I, 
of course, I watch film on the great players. You know, recently drafted uh, in the Hall of Fame, Michael Strahan. I love watching Michael Strahan. Michael Strahan bull rushes, you know, to get his sacks. And uh, so I, I like to look at a lot of uh, how they became, you know, Hall of Famers. So, I mean, but I like to model myself off of my, after myself. So, what has been probably the biggest shock to you coming to the Cowboys organization, dealing with Jerry Jones? Being a part of that locker room, getting to know the players, what has stood out for you in terms of your Dallas experience to date? The fans. These, the, these are probably the most diehard fans in, of all football, and I love Dallas. Uh, I mean, they're, they were so... <clears throat> you just got to get into the game. Yeah, I mean, when, the, when I came here, it was all welcome arms. I mean, uh, two days, they came with mail, fan mail already, and it was just like a stack of fan mail already, just... Like, we're so proud of you that you're a cowboy. Uh, let's get a Super Bowl. <laughs> now, you say we've got diehard fans, but I think anyone that saw the game on TV or that was at the game saw there was a whole bunch of red there, a lot of 49er fans. <laughs> Henry, I asked you this before. Yeah. You were in Chicago. Have you ever seen anything like that? No. That's what I said when you saw I was like, we just got to get them to the games. We have a lot of diehards, but I don't know where they're at. They no, got to get I, there. No, I mean, they, we, those 49er fans, they just bought their jersey and, and their shirts <laughs> like at a team store. They're just just jersey fans, in my opinion. Yeah. All right. Yeah. See, I told yeah. you this guy was like, confident. They're jersey fans. So they weren't diehards. They weren't yeah, they were jersey fans who just bought their shirt like, oh, man, they're winning, so let's let me buy my jersey. This, the Cowboys are way better fans than the 49ers. All right. I think the Cowboy fans like Michael Sam. All right, we're going to hear more from Michael Sam and Henry Melton. We come back. Inside the Huddle continues next. Fly without a plane. What if you could fly without wings? What if you could fly without a parachute? Without strings attached. Or even a cape. What if is here. Every age, every ability. I fly indoor skydiving. Fun every time. Do you have what it takes to be a diva? We are truly Dallas Cowboy fans. We work very hard to stay in shape. But we can still remain a real diva to keep a woman. Now drink up. Diva style. Now how about them cowboys? Most doctors, lawyers, and insurance companies will tell you to get checked out by a healthcare professional immediately after an auto accident. That's why if you've been injured, the first call you need to make is to Accident and Injury Chiropractic. Their gentle, caring team of professionals will take care of you, your pain, and your injuries. They've been helping me, my friends, my family, and thousands more for 23 years. Call them now at 214-946-PAIN or 817-461-PAIN. Welcome back to Inside the Huddle. I'm your host, Jane Slater, joined once again by Henry Melton and Michael Sam. And guys, before we put talk of the Cowboys to bed, you know, I do want to talk about your college careers because both of them had so many highlights. But what are your expectations for the Cowboys this year and your role on the team? Um, you know, we're just going to go out there and, and, um, and work. You know, <clears throat> you know, we brought we brought in. Uh, I'm speaking for the D line. You know, we brought in. Uh, you know, a lot of guys. We have a lot of guys in the room that, um, you know, very high energy. You know, impact kind of kind of guys. And um, you can tell from the game that there's a lot of guys that are hungry, ready to make plays. Michael. We you know when I signed my contract uh, to the Cowboys, I there there's tradition that comes along with that, and and, and the tradition is winning and winning championships. So. I think that's uh, the most important goal is for and our expe expectations as a team is to win, win games so we can eventually win a championship. All right. Let's talk a little bit about your college careers. Of course, Mizzou. And we've got University of Texas at Austin. Throw your horns up. Well, let's talk about one of your highlights. Had to be the 2005 National Championship game. What was it like being in that atmosphere? Amazing. You know, it was... Uh you know, once in a lifetime type of, you know, type of game, you know, people, even when I was here, people still came up and, you know, talked about that game. So, um, you know, it was a special, you know, a special moment to be a part of. 
And you, of course, you got co-SEC uh, Defensive Player of the Year. That had to be pretty impressive. Yeah, very impressive. And I, I, I thank you. Uh, thank my teammates and, and our coaching staff and our whole, uh, our whole student body in school. Uh, it was just an amazing senior year for me. Is it odd to you that you ended your college career playing at AT&T Stadium and you kind of start it with the Cowboys, you know, over the weekend? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I never thought I would be playing for the Cowboys that next uh, next season. And, uh, and I, ha I had a huge uh, game changer uh, sack fumble against Oklahoma State and the uh, AT&T Stadium. And now I get to just being in that stadium this past Sunday, just like, wow, it was like right over there on the 30 when that, when that happened. Now I'm, I'm looking uh, as a, with a star on my, uh, on my hat. I, was on, I wasn't dressed, but it was, it, was a, it was a great experience. Obviously, for a lot of people that don't know, you've become a champion in the LGBT community. You've become a household name in, in some respect. And I have to wonder, growing up, did you ever see Michael Sam becoming a guy that would be a household name and, and, and really becoming a champion of a cause that's important to a lot of people. Absolutely not. I thought uh, after high school, I mean, it was just football gave me so much and I, I love and respect this game so much because it, it got me, me where I am today and I, I'm ever the God and uh, God has been with me and had my back this entire time throughout my life and all the all the adversity I went through as a child and, and even now going through and, and, and I always put my faith, uh, my trust in God and then and the people who support me. And I'm very grateful that I'm here today talking to you and, and being with the Cowboys. Why was it important for you to talk about your personal life ahead of the draft? Because uh, you know what? It was going to come out anyways and I, I wanted to beat the curve uh, because I came out uh, to my teammates, uh, and it was open to my teammates last uh, semester. And my goal was to actually to just do the same thing to whatever team I, I uh, got, who picked me up in the draft. And do you think that it's it's fair that there's been a focus on that? You know what? I I want my football, my plan when I play in a game to do the talking for me. And uh, I'm thank God I had a you know a great, uh, pretty good uh, preseason uh, games. I got better every week, and uh, so hopefully it will just be focused on that. Uh, it, it's still it is it's 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 starting to shift that way, which I'm very grateful for because I'm a football player. I'm not I'm not a, a I'm not a celebrity. I'm, uh, I'm glad. I'm glad what I'm doing to help the LGBT uh, community. But football comes first. This is this is my job. This is my profession. I am an NFL player. It seems as though you had a lot of support from Mizzou and, and talking to some of your teammates and seeing some of the tweets and the social media. It seems like they were pretty supportive of you. Have you quite felt as comfortable as you did at Mizzou yet with NFL teammates? You know what? I'm. Uh, when I went to the Rams, it was it was it was it was it was scary. And uh, they were, they warmed up to me, and it was uh, it was good. But when I went to the Cowboys, it was all already open arms. I don't know if because of with the Rams how it was new, but when I came to the Cowboys, I guess they saw how uh, hey, Michael Sam is a football player. He he's not no he's not a freak show. He's a football player. He can help us win games. And uh, so it was all open arms, and I'm uh, I feel more welcome here than I felt at the Rams. For those that don't know, I mean, it, it really has been like a revolving door um, in the locker room at Valley Ranch. I mean, on the lockers, a lot of the guys that aren't going to stick around or on the bubble, there's tape up on their locker, and that says their name. So I'm sure your goal is to get your name up there yeah. in white <laughs> and not on tape, knowing that you're permanent. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I mean, um, it's you never know. Like, I'm, I remember I was talking to my, some of my former teammates who was uh, who were free agents in this past draft. Uh, when it came down to cutting time, it was like, if you ever watched the Hunger Games, it was like, you know, like, <laughs> like no one volunteers to get cut. So it was quiet, very scary. It was like, oh, man, like. We <laughs> so what we is it like? I mean, we've heard about, they call him the Turk. And the Turk essentially pulls you into the office and says, here's the deal. Thanks for what you've done for us, but this isn't quite going to work here's out. A plane, no. Here's your plane ticket and good call luck to the you. Reaper. They yeah, call him the, the Reaper. Reaper. Yeah, that's what the Reaper. Nice. Reaper. Yeah. You see him. He's he's comes in the locker room. He's like kind of, he has like the dark hoodie on. He's the just like looking first. for somebody. We're just like, Donna, <laughs> Donna, Donna. The last day of the when I was hit with the Rams and uh, 
during cuts, uh, it was after the four pieces of the game, we were lifting weights and I was literally talking to a friend. Mm -hmm. I went, I went to like pit my waist up and he was gone. And I did not see oh, <laughs> I was like, where did he go? He just, like, it right really is like Hunger like, Games. If you've seen the movie, they just kind of pull him out. I was literally <laughs> putting the waist on the bar. <laughs> and then I looked away. He was gone. And I was like, where'd he go? And he, I, I realized that he got cut. And I was like, wow. It was. It happened that fast. And I am I kid you not. I swear to God, it oh, happened that fast. He'll find you. <laughs> you can be <laughs> hiding in the bathroom. It was like be in the stall <laughs> next to you. <laughs> You can't They'll hide. find you. They'll they will you. find you. Find All right, guys, we're going to find out more about you, too. Let's talk about most embarrassing song on your iPod, <laughs> your first NFL purchase. Let's get to know these guys off the field. Coming up next on Inside the Huddle. <laughs> Do you have what it takes to be a diva? We are truly Dallas Cowboy fans. We work very hard to stay in shape but we can still remain a real diva to keep a woman. Now drink up, diva style. Now how about them cowboys? What if you could fly without a plane? What if you could fly without wings? What if you could fly without a parachute? Without strings attached? Or even a cape? What if is here? Every age, every ability. I fly indoor skydiving. Fun every time. Have you been injured in an auto accident? At Accident and Injury Chiropractic, taking care of auto accident victims like you is all they do. And they've never let me down. Call now at 214-946-PAIN or 817-461-PAIN. Welcome back to Inside the Huddle, where we film every week here at the House of Blues. And if you haven't been here for a concert, you really should come check it out. They've got so many coming up. Got a handy little note card here to tell you guys about it. Theory of a Dead Man on Saturday, September 20th. The Airborne Toxic Event on Wednesday, September 24th. Better Than Ezra on Friday, September 26th. Henry, yes, I'm old, so I'm very familiar with Better Than Ezra. <laughs> and we've got an upcoming event here, Football Watch Party in the Foundation Room. That is Sunday, September 28th. We'll have $5 drink specials and a specialty Cajun tailgate menu. That sounds fun. All right, in this segment, it's our last segment to get to know these guys. We are just talking about music, and I love music. Henry, I know that you love music. Michael, you like music? Absolutely. All right, what is the most embarrassing song right now on your iPod? I don't only have three songs on my iPod. You only have three songs on your <laughs> yeah. iPod. How do you listen to music then? YouTube. <laughs> so what are you listening to right now? Uh, I mean, I, I like all kinds of music, but I know I like country. I like R&B. I like oldies. Uh, to be honest with you, my favorite type of music are the oldies, like Temptations, Earth, Wind, and Fire. So that's my favorite type of music. So, so that's how you're getting hype before a game is no. you're listening to Earth, Wind, and Fire. I actually, <laughs> I actually don't listen to music before games. What do you do? I just be alone with my thoughts. Like I told you, defensive players are crazy. So I like to be alone with my thoughts. I like to, you know, focus on what's at hand. Which is All right. <laughs> what are you giggling about? What? I like You're over there giggling. He's giving you an answer. He's focused before the game. He's talking about being a little bit crazy. No, I know. I saw his, because defensive players are, you got to be a little cuckoo. You're a little off. I am. Yeah. <laughs> I am. yeah. Good to know. All right, so as you talked about, you guys have to have an element of being an actor. Okay, scene. What am I expecting? I'm on the other side of the ball, Henry Melton on game day. Um, You know, I've, I've, I've always wanted to try the... Uh, the, the little giants with the snot bubbles. Uh, <laughs> I've always wanted to try that. That's I, charming. I knew guys <laughs> who made themselves throw up. I knew guys who make themselves bleed before games. I knew, I knew guys uh, who Mizzou. I knew I knew some guys, no not <laughs> Mizzou, not just Mizzou. I knew so uh, are doing I knew there. guys who took shots before the games. Uh, for me, I mean, like, if I'm, I'm playing and I make a, if I get a sack, you better believe I'm going to do my sack, Dan. All right, let's talk first NFL purchases. What was your first one? I think I bought a, a wallet. <laughs> <laughs> I, a, I, I still do have it, Do you still too. have it? Okay, that was going to be my next question. I do. You want to show it to us? My little, 
A little Louis. Little oh, Louis. he likes the labels, this one. He okay. Got, he, he got a bigger paycheck than I do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Ex well, I know when you're coming in, Bell, there's varying salaries. Have you made a big purchase yet? Uh, no, but I did uh, I did buy my boyfriend and I some 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 suits. So nice. uh, so we're looking very dapper. Was there any rookie hazing for you with St. Louis? Mm, uh, yes. No, we had to uh, we had to kind of tell a little story, you know, and it had to be funny, and uh, so that was pretty much it. You, did you have to carry any pads, any rookie hazing in Chicago? Mm, not really. No. Who was the toughest guy on you when you joined the Bears? Toughest guy. Um, I mean. When I was a rookie, we had uh, Alex Brown and, uh, oh man, they were both defensive. They were hard. They were hard on us. Did too. they ever make you pick up the tab somewhere? We've heard about these notorious oh, yeah. steak dinners where oh, they yeah. make you rookie pick nights? up the tab. Oh, yeah, rookie night. What was the biggest bill on rookie night? Um, mine was, I think we, I split it with another rookie, so my part was like 11000 Ah. Eleven thousand dollars. <laughs> That's almost my first year salary split. as a reporter. <laughs> but That's we had my last year in Chicago though. We had uh, we had Shay McClellan, and then uh, we we went to you know, this expensive you know restaurant, bought all this stuff, and then we made them bring out. We told the the waiter before to bring out a fake bill. <laughs> So that he brought is, out a bill I mean, that's that was psychological like, hazing, Henry. Oh man, we brought it. This bill that said like it was like fifty-three thousand dollars, <laughs> and he was like, I mean, he completely just broke down. He was like, I'm gonna have to walk home. Like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's like, we, it was so, it was so funny. So it was fun to turn the tables at one point in your life. <laughs> oh birthday. yeah, you have to. What you look forward to. Does that create a bond in the locker room then? It does. You know, it gets some. You know, you get build some chemistry, and you really get to know each other. And uh, you know, we're gonna start doing that this year here, and having our, you know, D-line dinners. No. We're, uh, oh, we're not <laughs> oh, I was like, come on, man! I don't have that 53-man yeah, roster paycheck yet. Hey, that's a good meal. That is that's a very good, good meal. <laughs> it is delicious. Well, guys, I have really enjoyed getting to know both of you. I hope that we see a lot more of of you obviously on the field this year. I know they're kind of phasing you into the game. We're ready for you to come back to Pro Bowl form. Rocking number 69. Are you going to be keeping your number, 46? Uh, no, if, when I be active, I'm going to change it. All right, well, we look forward to it. You guys want to see this guy on the 53-man roster for the Cowboys? All right. Michael, thank you so much thank for coming you. by. We appreciate you coming up here, and thank you for intimidating him <laughs> to do that as well. All right, stick around on Inside the Huddle. We've got to talk to one of our more important people on the show. That is our sponsors. We'll hear from the next. Your injuries from an auto accident need to be taken seriously. That's what the experienced, caring professionals at Accident and Injury Chiropractic do. Trust the team I call for the pro treatment. Call 214-946-PAIN or 817-461-PAIN now. Do you have what it takes to be a diva? We are truly Dallas Cowboy fans. We work very hard to stay in shape. But we can still remain a real diva tequila woman. Now drink up, diva style. Now how about them cowboys? What if you could fly without a plane? What if you could fly without wings? What if you could fly without a parachute? Without strings attached? Or even a cape? What if is here? Every age, every ability. I fly indoor skydiving. Fun every time. Welcome back to Inside the Huddle. I'm your host, Jane Slater. We're doing this show at House of Blues, and of course, House of Blues is a sponsor, along with Windrush Homes. You know, we wouldn't be able to do this show for the past 23 years without guys like you. Welcoming up to the stage, we've got Steve and Jeff. Glad to have you guys back this year. We're glad to be back. It's been a great year. All right, let's talk a little bit about the Cowboys. How confident are you in the Cowboys after having the guys up here on stage? I know you guys caught the first game. We are optimistic as usual. <laughs> Looking forward to a great season. Let's talk about this new project that you guys are working on. 
We've got a community that we're doing the second phase in. Uh, it's Wimberley. It's up in Allen. It's a gated community. It's got 29 of the most beautiful lots you've ever seen, um, from three quarters of an acre to a little over an acre, and just in the most amazing place. Seems like everybody's moving north these, these days. Why is that? It's just a wonderful place to live. I mean, the schools in Allen are outstanding. It's so centrally located. All right, so talk to me about what's going into this project. You know, obviously there's a lot that goes into putting something together like this. Where did the idea come from? You know, how long have you guys been working on this? Well, this deal has been really exciting because this is phase two of, of, of a development that's already started. So it's the last 29 acres, there's 29 lots there, and the roads will be going in this winter and spring. Uh, we're pre-selling lots now, but uh, homes will probably start being constructed on it starting this summer. Talk about some of your other projects so people can, by comparison, say what this community is going to look like. Well, one of the things that we're working on right now, it's hard to compare to too many other deals. It's a very large home, actually kind of a compound. We're uh, in the process of building a 20,000 square foot home with a pool, a pavilion, a barn, a tree house. It's on 43 acres up in Prosper. So this sounds like this isn't just your average Joe that's going to be living there. No, no, this, this is definitely Look at them giving the looks athlete. to the side. We, I'm going to try to we, pry it out of them. No Not question. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you keep it confidential. All right. Do I just sit down with you and basically say, I'm going to throw a couple of ideas up here on the board and see what you guys can help me come up with? Jeff's the man. Absolutely. We sit down. I'll sit down with you. Um, I'll, I'll decide how you're going to live in that home, how it is that you want to use your space. And then we bring in our architect, and we work together as a team and really put together some fun designs. And once Jeff has gotten everything in place, I'm the one that actually has to build whatever he lets them pick out and design. Yeah. So. so I have to hear about it when I design something that apparently is more fun to live in than to build. So you're the dreamer, he's the realist in this, in yes. this partnership. He All keeps right. him from falling over. Well, yeah. I enjoy this partnership and like I said, enjoy the fact that you guys have come back for another season here on Inside the Huddle. We appreciate it. Where can people get a hold of you? You know, go to our webpage at windrushhomes.com um, and, and look us up. All right. Thank you guys so much. That's a wrap for this first episode of Inside the Huddle. Go ahead and check us out. Same time, same channel next week. Bye, everyone. Thanks for coming. We appreciate it. Inside the Huddle has been presented by Sports Media Incorporated, Accident and Injury Chiropractic, Advanced Audio Video, Allied Siding and Windows, Apple Vacations, Armor Wealth Management, Cowboy Fan Connection, Dymaco, Diva Tequila, Garage Works, Gold Crusher, Holden New Homes, iFly, Michelle Lynn Interiors Group, Tequila Penasco, Town Square Financial, Volt Security, and Windrush Homes. Video production of Inside the Huddle by Play Now Enterprises. Inside the Huddle is a Sports Media Incorporated production. Executive producers, Ray Salinas and Chris Vandeventer.